IndyCar CEO decides to belittle their most popular driver. Richard Childress says that NASCAR racing has changed forever and an update on the Parker Retzloff fallout from Daytona. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. IndyCar CEO Mark Miles had his Mac McGill moment for all my Friday Night Lights viewers out there that are running through the seasons as football season rapidly approaches. On Friday in Milwaukee, when asked why IndyCar doesn't have a race in Mexico, even though their most popular driver, Pato Award, is a Mexican national, and NASCAR just announced that they'll be racing in Mexico, why hasn't IndyCar made it down there? Mark Miles did what Mark Miles and IndyCar does best. He deflected and he decided to try to belittle uh, Pato Award. And he said, quote, I will say that it's clear that Pato isn't as famous as the last previously famous Mexican driver, Adrian Fernandez, but he's really gaining ground and he's actually on some billboards now. Yeah, what a terrible statement from Mark Miles. First off, it's kind of a self-own saying that he's not as popular as the previous Mexican driver, Adrian Fernandez, who was like maybe the 12th most popular driver, meaning that the popularity of IndyCar has fallen off that much Really stupid to say that. Pato Award also has more followers on Instagram than IndyCar as a series does. So, yeah, to say that he's not popular is really stupid. Another stupid thing to say. So, Pato responded in the most Pato way possible on Saturday morning. And he tweeted out, speaking of billboards, and included a picture of a billboard in Milwaukee advertising the NASCAR Truck Series race from the week prior, essentially saying, to IndyCar and Penske Entertainment, you're not doing enough to promote us in the markets that we're already in. What do you mean I'm not popular enough to go to Mexico? It's a really stupid thing to say. And for IndyCar, Mark Miles and IndyCar have been talking about an international race for a decade, and they have yet to make it back there. They've yet to make it to Mexico. 2014, 2016, 2018, 2020, 2022, now 2024, Mark Miles said, hey, we're looking at having international races in 2026. Yeah, well, buddy, we've heard the same thing for the last decade, and you've yet to do anything. At this point, IndyCar is a essentially like the Patty's Pub of sporting leagues. You're not really sure why it's in business. There's some old white guys sitting in there talking absolute nonsense. It's somewhat entertaining, so you keep going back because it's pretty fun. But at the end of the day, you leave going, there's no way this is sustainable. There's no way it's going to last, right? It keeps coming back, but eventually you feel like that time period is going to run out. Mark Miles did respond on Saturday in Milwaukee and said, quote, as I said repeatedly yesterday, Pato is a natural star and his popularity is tremendous and growing. It is unfortunate that a few of my additional remarks failed to convey anything other than this viewpoint. He is a marquee personality for our series and a terrific partner in our marketing and promotional efforts. We continue to invest in our drivers and Pato absolutely continues to be a primary individual. We direct resources and support to. In summary, Mexico remains a market of heavy interest and we believe that there will be an amazing IndyCar race weekend there sooner rather than later. Later, Pato is a superstar, and his popularity and talent will be critical to making this happen. Yeah, so Mark Miles is out here trying to save face, and IndyCar PR department is like, can we just make it through a weekend where we don't have controversy for one time? Yeah, it's a really dumb remark by Mark Miles. You're not doing your job. What are you even talking about at this point? And like I said, Mark Miles continues to talk about, we're going to do this in the future. We're looking at this for next year. We're looking at this for next year. Eventually, next year has to come, and then he does happen you keep saying next year you're the boy who cried wolf at this point you keep saying you're going to do it but you haven't actually done it it's the perpetual liar friend that everybody has where you're like okay you can say that buddy but like, we know you're not actually going to do that which is fine you can keep believing your little lie but at some point nobody's going to take you seriously and we're all just going to drown you out which is what we do when mark miles talks about the future of indycar when you talk about going to Mexico and saying that Pato Award's not famous enough and probably couldn't help support a racer, that is a ludicrous take. I was at the Indy 500 this year. When Pato Award took the lead on the final lap to the white flag, that place absolutely erupted. It was insane. And people are like, well, that was just because it was the past, you know, going to the white flag lap. Not necessarily true. Basically, like what, one out of five, one out of every seven people that walks by is wearing a Paddle Award shirt, jersey, something like that. Paddle Award, as Alexander Rossi pointed out on Twitter, is the only driver that has his own merch tent. You know, they sell out on the team tent. Pato has his own merch tent for his fans. He has an abundance of fans. It's the same reason why the Formula One race down in Mexico works so well. It's the only reason that it even went back is because of the success of Sergio Perez and the popularity that he brings with him. That's why it's going there. Daniel Suarez is going to immensely help the popularity of NASCAR in Mexico. Pato Award has done the same thing for IndyCar. They could absolutely have a great crowd if they would just take the risk and go down there and do it, but they're not going to take the risk because that's not what Penske Entertainment does. Penske Entertainment is white bread. Penske Entertainment likes a little bit of mayonnaise on things, but nothing more than that because 
because they don't want to take that risk. They're like, oh, you know, we're going to play it safe here. We'd rather drink water than have a Sprite because, you know, carbonation could get us a little bloated and maybe a little gassy. We might burp. It'll... Shut up and just do something fun for once in your life. Just take that risk. Go to Mexico. Go somewhere other than continually talking about it. So, hey, I'm glad Pato clapped back. I'm glad other drivers have clapped back as well. Um, hey, we've all been talking crap about the Penske Entertainment IndyCar Series for the better part of two years now and really ramped it up this year. The drivers are joining the party. Everybody, let's get on this train together and not change a thing, but feel better about it in the end of the day. Moving on to the topic of Richard Childress. Somebody go get Pop Pop and uh, put him in that San Junipero home from Black Mirror because I think he's probably not fit to talk to the media so much uh, anymore, more than likely, because he went and talked to Bob Pockers and other media members on Saturday at Darlington, and he was out here firing off takes like if he wasn't a NASCAR owner, he'd be on Facebook commenting like all the other olds do. That's what he was doing. Just ridiculous takes and said that NASCAR racing has changed forever after NASCAR, uh, the Motorsports Appeals Panel rather denied both of Austin Dillon's appeals from his penalty stemming from the Richmond incident where he got to keep his win, but was stripped of his playoff eligibility after intentionally wrecking Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin coming to the checkered flag. Uh, essentially what Richard said is that NASCAR racing change forever. Drivers will no longer be allowed to make contact on the last lap or they'll be super weary of doing it. And that NASCAR has maybe kind of drawn a line, but still leave. NASCAR drew a line here. You just can't do that. You can't intentionally dump somebody and then right hook somebody into the wall. That's the line. Don't do that. And you're going to be totally fine. You can still get away with a bump and run. You can probably still get away with a dump and run if we're being completely honest. But when you have just absolute destruction, like you're in a NASCAR heat five lobby, I mean, heck on I racing, you even get penalized for that same thing. That's an 8x every single time, probably even a 12x with the amount of contact that he made there. So Austin does, deserves a penalty and he got that penalty. It was denied by the Motorsports Appeals Panel. He was denied by uh, the final appeals officer. And that's what it came down to. When asked by Bob Pockers if he thought about pursuing legal action, Richard said that no, they hadn't thought about it, but he did have his lawyers look it over and they easily would have won the case, which probably wouldn't have. There's a legal argument certainly to be made, but you really can't legally go after anything here. I mean, he can't because when you sign up to be a participant in NASCAR, you also agree to not litigate against NASCAR. So that would have been a really weird avenue for him to attempt to go down. But NASCAR can argue it the same way that RC is going to argue it. And then you would just end up in a stalemate and a bunch of wasted money. But Richard did say that NASCAR stripping them of their playoff eligibility essentially cost them around a million dollars. And then finally, an update on the Parker Retzloff fallout from Daytona. So I was told after the race that Parker Retzloff got a stern talking to, to the, I would say screamed at, I would say probably got screamed at uh, based off of what I was told by Chevy RCR uh, people in that camp. And people are constantly, or people on the internet this week are like, oh, he should have helped Kyle Busch out. Well, if you go back and watch the final two laps of that race, where's he supposed to help Kyle Busch out at? And then people are like, well, he should have bailed on the 21 on the last lap there and made sure that he didn't push him to the win. So you want Parker Retzloff in his second ever NASCAR Cup Series race that ha is, ha is in contention to win, has a chance to win this race with his sponsor from the Xfinity Series that has supported him this entire time to just bail out so that Kyle Busch can win a race, sacrifice his own race, finish back in the 20s, and then call his sponsor up and be like, yeah, but I had to do that to help out Kyle, who's not even one of my actual teammates, is just an affiliate at this point. Yeah, no, that's never going to happen. Parker Retzloff did nothing wrong. And when asked about it this weekend at Darlington, Kyle Busch said that Parker Retzloff was not in the Chevy meeting with all the Chevy drivers talking about what the strategy was for Daytona. Parker Retzloff wasn't in there. So there's nothing to say that, you know, Parker wasn't part of this grand scheme. Parker's out on his own little island, just out there trying to get the best result for himself and that 62 Beard Motorsports team. And he got a P7 finish, which is a solid finish for his second ever race. But at no point should he ever have pulled over or prioritize Kyle Busch's race over, over his. So unfortunately for Parker, he has had to deal with all this nonsense this week. But when you talk about it, Kyle Busch said, no, he doesn't owe me anything. Yeah, because he doesn't. Kyle, Kyle wanted the 20 car Christopher Bell behind him. Parker went to the high side. Parker is there to win this race. Parker is not there to push Kyle Busch to victory. Remember when Michael McDowell said that I'm not here to push Joey Logano to the victory in the Daytona 500? That is the same thing here in this situation. Parker Retzloff's there to look out for himself, not to push Kyle Busch to victory lane. So I'm glad that Kyle came out and said something and also shed some light on this where, yeah, Parker wasn't part of the whole grand plan of the entire day. So it's hard to get mad at him when you guys don't include him in the plans. It's like, hey, we're all going to do this. Don't tell Parker, though.
at the end of the race, Parker, why the F didn't you do this? And he's like, I didn't know. I didn't, we, nobody told me. What are we talking about here? So let me know in the comments what you think about Pato Award and the IndyCar situation going on over there. Uh, Richard Childers' comments, as well as what's going on with Parker Retzloff here. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.